about your x axis and you can get it from table. Any question? First example, we need to calculate the plastic moment MB for W10 times 60 of steel A992. So plastic moment equal F yield times ZX. If you go to the table of steel type for steel A992, I think your F yield 50. Yeah. What is the value of ZX for this cross section? 10 times 60. <coughs> Go back to your table. 10 times 60. You have 10 times 60. We have 10 times 112. 10 times 100. Keep going. 10 times 77. 10 times 68. 10 times 54. Here you go. 10 times 60. 10 times 60. I'm talking about tables called design of beam. Design of beam. So, ZX for cross section 10 times 60 equal what? 74.6 inch cube. And this one cap divide inch square. Your final answer will be cap time inch. Your moment will be 50 times 74.6 in a very, very, very simple way. Not like concrete design. We need to do some calculations. No. For steel, if you would like to get your plastic moment, your nominal moment, just F yield times ZX in one condition. We will talk about this later. Uh, Z from your table time F yield. What is the value? 37. 37. 30. Mm, I prefer to convert it to cap foot divided by 12. 311. 311 cap foot. This value, not your design <laughs> moment, this value can be your nominal moment. If you would like to get your design moment, we need to uh, multiply this value by but the problem is only for plastic moments. Dr. Ayman, yeah. the organization of this uh, ZX table, like, how, how did you, because there's so many... The same cross-section? 10 yeah. times 60? No, no, no. Because, see, like, the way we read our W tables for W shapes is, like, they're all in order, but these are <coughs> kind of all over the place. Yes, it's different because the main purpose for this table to design beam. Can you see here? We have something called <coughs> FAM plastic. We have many PF, we have LP, LR, different uh, pairs from this table. So it's not in the same order. 18, 19, 20, no, it's different. Okay? The ZXs are getting smaller and smaller, huh? Yes. Can you go ahead and uh, uh, and uh, multiply this number by phi point nine? Two eighty. Perfect. Cap. Foot. That's right. That's right. Can you work <coughs> this value? <coughs> Two hundred eighty. So this table can tell you 
what is your design moment directly? Fail MP. So once you can decide which cross section you will use, in one step you can get your design moment from your steeple. If you would like to do your calculations, that's fine. Your plastic moment equal F yield times ZX, that is your ZX. Then your value times Fe, you can get your design moment. Design of steel mainly based on tables. You can use table for everything in steel. Let's keep going because life isn't simple like this. <laughs> Uh, we have three types of cross sections in steel, actually. We prefer the first one. We don't like the second one. Maybe the second one is okay, but the third one, we don't like it. Uh, your cross section, I section, or channel, or any cross section can be compact section, can be non-compact section, can be slender section, depending on what is the value or what is the ratio between width and thickness. Width of your flange and its thickness. Width of your web and thickness. So, we need to classify our cross section because if your cross section is compact and we like to use this cross section, your design moment equal phase F yield uh, ZX. That's all, like we did. But if your cross section is non-compact, no, we need to do some change. Also table will help you but a different, in a different way. If your cross section is a slender section, very, very different way. Anyway, classification of shapes can be summarized uh, based on this table. By the way, if you are talking about this cross section, this element called flange. And this element called flange. This element, this part of this cross section called web. This distance called B flange. And this thickness called T flange. And this total, total, total distance called H. And the thickness called T web. So we can set up this table for flange. Can you divide B flange divided by two T flange? Yes. Can you get this value? 0.38 square root of E youngest model is 29,000. Divided by Fe, yes. For lambda P, this value, lambda. Can you get lambda R? Yes, one times square root E divide Fe. So, if your lambda smaller than or equal this lambda B, your cross section is common. If your lambda in between lambda P and lambda R, your cross section is non compact. If your lambda, this value, greater than lambda R, your cross section is cylinder, according to flange. One more time. For web, we have two terms, H and T web. If you divide H 
by T width, you can get your lambda value. And lambda, lambda P and lambda R. If your lambda value smaller than lambda P, your cross section is compact related to web. If your lambda value in between lambda B and lambda R, your cross section according to the web, non compact. If your lambda value greater than lambda R, your cross section is slender. So from this table, can tell you your cross section is uh, very good in design, in resisting load. Um, something good, not good, not, not perfect, not bad, non compact Slender, no, we need to try to avoid this type of cross-section. We have many, many problems related to slender cross-section, especially for steel. We don't like this cross-section. How we can determine your cross-section is compact and compact slender based on flange dimensions and web dimensions. So we have a relationship between lambda, lambda P, lambda R, what is the relation? If your lambda smaller than or equal lambda B, compact. In between, non-compact, greater than lambda R, slender. Can you have a flange be compact and a web be non-compact? Perfect. The mm -hmm. category is based on the worst width to thickness ratio. For example, if the web is compact, and the flange is non-compact, then the shape of the cross-section can be as non-compact. So what is the worst case of your flange and web? If this part is compact and this one is non-compact, the whole cross-section is non-compact. If this one is non-compact, this one is cylinder, the whole cross-section is cylinder. The worst case. Mm -hmm. Let's change this word. Not all section, but most of sections in your tables are compact section. Let's, not all, nothing is perfect 100%. Most of the sections in your table, if you select a cross section from a table, it's compact section. Most of them. So from this slide, we understood something called classification of your cross section can be compact non-compact slender and this classification based <coughs> on what is the dimension of your flange what are the dimensions of your web we have another concept which call lateral Torsion buckling. We don't like this one. We don't like this phenomenon in steel. What is the meaning of this phenomenon? Do you know what is the meaning of this photo? It's a bridge. It's a bridge, yes. Can you see this one? This cross? Mm -hmm. What's the core? What's this uh, element called? Bracing. Cross Vertical bracing. bracing. It's cross. What is the main purpose of this cross? The main purpose for this cross to avoid this shape of failure, which called lateral torsional buckling. Uh, buckling? We talked about buckling. No, I'm talking about lateral torsion buckling. I'm sorry, what you mean? Okay. Do you remember for column under compression? That's right. Mm -hmm. We can expect something called buckling, and we calculated something called B critical. Buckling in column is different than this type of uh, lateral torsion buckling. I'm sorry. The whole cross section, the whole column moved and buckled. But in this beam, your bottom flange. Is good because it's under tension. But the top flange only buckle like this. 
because this flange under compression. You guys know from steel, uh, from concrete design, we have moment on your cross section. So this moment will make tension in one side and the compression on the other side in between something called the neutral axis. That's right. In steel, the same meaning also. We have cross section, maybe different shape, not like concrete. We have a moment. This moment will make tension in one side. We don't have any problem with tension, with the steel. But the main issue with uh, in steel in under compression. So this flange under compression. So sometimes if this lens is very long, we can expect buckling only for this flange. So buckling for this flange only, no buckling on the bottom flange, so we can expect torsional twisting of your cross section. So we have pheno a phenomena called lateral torsional buckling in beam for co flange under compression. We can avoid this shape of buckling or this deformation or this failure by reducing this length. What will happen if we make support at this location? So this lens cannot buckle. This lens cannot buckle. So this is the main purpose for this cross section, uh, uh, crosses. You, need, you see, this process is repeated at a certain distance to avoid this type of this shape of buckling. Let's watch this video. <laughs> this one is a testing machine <coughs> for a steel beam. We have a steel beam under concentrated load. So we can expect moments will happen. <laughs> 